My favorite song that my dad used to sing to me when I was little was called the Oreo Cookie Blues. <laughs> Icing on my fingers, chocolate on my lips. I've always been a big music fan since that day in 1964 with Ed Sullivan and the Beatles, you know, like so many other guys my age. I got them Oreo cream sandwich. Chocolate covered cream filled cookie blue. The day after my 64th birthday, we started talking. She started talking, I started babbling. She said, uh, you know, maybe your sugar's low, let me get you some apple juice. Pretty much poured the apple juice down one side of my face. So the next thing I know, uh, she's on the phone and she's calling the uh, rescue squad, she's calling 911. For every minute that a patient's blood vessel is blocked, we potentially lose two million neurons, which is pretty substantial. My mom called my cell phone and she said, an ambulance was just here, your dad had a stroke. People die from strokes. It's a major source of disability in this country. I was just starting to hyperventilate and all I could think about was, um, you know, I've lost my sister, I'm gonna lose my dad. Our first daughter, she was 26 and she died in a car accident the day after Christmas. 2001. I do remember Marty's case very vividly. The reason being he was the first case that we did here as an emergent acute stroke at Memorial Hospital. Marty had one clot that had traveled to his um, brain, the right side of his brain. And that's why he couldn't move his left side and why he was having trouble speaking. What this helps us determine is the areas of the brain where there is lack of blood flow. I consider myself a brain plumber. It's simple plumbing. What we need to do as quickly as possible is get a catheter inside of the brain. The area of the brain that is potentially affected is quite large. So if we don't get that open, this could potentially be a quite devastating debilitating stroke. In his case, uh, the procedure went very quickly. The catheter that I used to engage right up to the clot, we turned that up to a suction device and actually physically, it's like pulling a cork out of the blood vessel. The entire clot was pulled into that catheter. Now you can see side by side a very large distribution of the normal blood vessels this is what we were missing over here, and it becomes very apparent when we look at the pre and the post, and this is what we strive for in every single case. I remember pulling back the curtain, not knowing what I was going to be walking into, just knowing the image that I had from the night before of being there, and he looked over and he said, you know, hi, Russ, and I went, oh my gosh, I never thought I would hear my dad say those words again. The next day, I happened to be on call, and got a call from the ICU uh, saying that they had found that he was in an irregular heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation and that his heart muscle had weakened substantially and he was actually in heart failure. He didn't know it, he didn't feel any of it, but his heart was running a race 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It'd be like if you're sitting there and just trying to lift weights all that time just as fast as you could and your muscles eventually kind of give out. Having a cardiac patient that has a stroke is pretty common in our, our life of treating stroke. I was a nurse for 37 years, so I knew the signs and symptoms of a stroke. Very grateful, I've said a thousand times she saved my life. <laughs> um, I think that putting her through nursing school was probably the smartest thing we ever did. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Fender Stratocaster and this is uh, my favorite because it seems to play the best and I just gravitate to it all the time. Thank you better slow your Mustang down. All I kept thinking was, I hope he can play his guitar. I don't care if he can't walk, he can't do anything else. He's gotta be able to play. I went down to his music room and I was just kind of looking around and I, I saw on the wall, he had a little ukulele and I said, perfect. And, and so I gave it to him and he, he started playing. We just knew that's that's what he needed, is he needed that music um, 
to, to go on. We were all so excited because we <laughs> no were like, yes, me. he's still back in the band. There are certain cases that stand out. I mean, he's one of them. There was no way that he was going to be out of the hospital and not playing out with his band. To see him standing up there on stage playing the guitar and singing, knowing he was in the ICU 12 days before, I don't even have the words for it. It was awesome. It, it was just, it was awesome. I mean, that's my dad. That's how I identify and associate my dad. It's, it's his music. Oh, it was cool. It was just, it was amazing. I said, you know what? I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I think it's really important for survivors to share their stories um, with others to create awareness. Um, not everybody knows or recognizes the sign of what a stroke is or what a heart attack is. You need funding, you need classes for that. So I, I think it's, it's another reason why people need to um, donate to the American Heart and Stroke Association. He's just one of the very best success stories that I've ever seen. It's just uh, nothing short of miraculous for him. It is truly a miracle. Everything that happened is truly a miracle. Got that Oreo cream sandwich. Chocolate covered cream filled cookie blue.